Wizzle Plus. Hello, welcome to Wizzle Plus. I'm Mr. Quinn. Today in Wizzle Plus, we're going to be looking at paraphrasing. Paraphrasing is a vitally important reading skill at levels three, four, five, six. Today, we are going to be having a look at some thinking tools and writing tools that you can use to improve upon your paraphrasing. Now, you might be wondering to yourself at this point in time, what, what is, para what? Para? Never heard that in my life. However, you will almost certainly have answered in your own words questions in the class and maybe during your revision. We paraphrase all the time in everyday life, in everyday conversation. I think that it's important as we go through the Wizzle Plus that we realise that these thinking and writing tools, the more the thinking tools, uh, are have use outside the classroom. They are um, uh, they are skills that you can use uh, in everyday life. For example, what have I got here? These are my sunglasses. And if I said to someone, oh, I've left the house without my sunglasses, they would understand what I meant. If I'd said to them, oh, I've left the house without my shades, they would still understand what I meant. I have used two words for the same thing. This is essentially what paraphrasing is. You might even think of the words that we use as being like the clothes that we give to meaning. This means that the same thing, the same meaning, can have different clothes. Sunglasses. Shades. I've left the house without my phone. I've left the house without my mobile. You would know what the person meant. It means the same thing. This needs some charge. This needs some battery. This is at 3%. It is actually 3%. What did you just get? I just got a message. I just got a text. It's the same thing. We can use different words to communicate the same meaning. Now, sometimes when we paraphrase, it isn't just single words that we change. We can reorganize phrases, sometimes even sentences. For example, we're currently in this lockdown situation. I personally am enjoying learning remote teaching. And I'm sure many of you will be using the time to try out new things, learn new skills, expand your interests even. If I was to take a statement like, I look forward to when pupils can return to the classroom. I may pay, paraphrase that. Pay, 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 pay. I may paraphrase that as, I look forward to when, I look forward to when, learners can get back to their education. As you can see, there's no lost meaning there. You know that I mean the same thing, but I've used different words to communicate it. And this is all paraphrasing is. Important to remember that we won't necessarily see that word paraphrasing in our questions. The way to identify a paraphrasing question though, most commonly is by the phrase in your own words or in your own words as far as possible. The as far as possible part is because sometimes there are phrases and words that uh, don't have direct synonyms. Synonyms. What does synonym mean? Well, it's not cinnamon. Well, it, it's no cinnamon. It's no Jerry Cinnamon. Synonyms are words that we can use interchangeably. They have almost the same meaning, but not quite the exact same meaning, and we'll come to that in a wee bit. So, to summarise what we've learned so far, paraphrasing is when we change the language 
but not the meaning. And this forms the basis of our writing tool. Always change the language, but not the meaning. And we'll come back to the writing tool shortly. I now want to speak to you about the thinking tool. How we should be thinking about paraphrasing. And to do this, we can refer to the very simple, the very humble plant pot. This won't be the first time that we refer to the plant pot. Now, if we imagine a plant pot as having stems coming out of the top and branches and roots coming out of the bottom. I know, I know that pots don't necessarily have roots coming out of the bottom, just for the purpose of this thinking tool. If we think of the roots coming out of the bottom as being synonyms, that's going to be really helpful. If some roots go deeper than others, and the deeper roots we can think of as being synonyms that are that little bit further away from the original meaning, and the shallower roots being that little bit closer to the original meaning. They're both synonyms. The plant pot is an excellent way to think about paraphrasing. We take parts of the text, whether it is written or something we listen to, we put them into the plant pot, and then we examine what synonyms come out of the bottom. If we take, for example, the word power, let's put power into the plant pot. Two fairly obvious synonyms to power would be authority or ability. Now, how do we check if they're synonyms? Well, we use a simple sentence. Let's take the sentence, the police do not have that power. And instead of power, we'll insert in there one of our synonyms, authority. The police do not have that authority. That sounds okay. The police do not have that ability. The meaning's still there. Authority would be that shallower root. It's very close to the original word. Ability starts to stray away from it a little bit, a little bit. Ability starts to stray away from it a little bit. Um, it's not quite as clear. You would raise an eyebrow if someone used that sentence. The police do not have that ability. That was my eyebrow reason. So, there we have it. The plant pot gives us an internal tool, a thinking tool that we can use when paraphrasing. We take the language that we want to paraphrase, we put it into this plant pot, and we see what synonyms we get out of the bottom. How do we check if the synonyms? A simple sentence will do that job. I left the house without my shades, I left the house without my sunglasses, um, I need to check my phone, I need to check my mobile, that kind of thing. Now where paraphrasing gets a little more complicated is when we're taking phrases or we're looking at a text and we're having to extract things to put into the plant pot. And to do that, I'm going to just walk through one with you. This one is on the PowerPoint. So let's have a look at it then. Let's have a read it first. Learning how to paraphrase is not an easy thing to do. It requires practice and determination. It is a skill which develops quickly for some, but can take longer for others. Okay then, let's put our thinking and writing tools into action here. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the highlighting marker and pick out all the things that we learn about paraphrasing in the passage. Right, it's not an easy thing to do. It requires practice also requires determination. It is a skill which develops quickly for some but longer for others. I think I'll take develops quickly for some and longer for others. So I have one, two, three, four, five points that I can make. Okay, so let's take one of these points and put it into the plant pot. I think I'll take 
not an easy thing to do since it is the first. Not an easy thing to do. There we go. Easy as that. Instead of drawing a big plant pot round about it, I'm just going to draw a little one in the margin here just to remind me what I'm doing. Not an easy thing to do. An obvious synonym for that would be difficult. And another synonym might be challenging. At this point, we need to return to the writing tool. Now, we already know the first part, change the language, but not the meaning. There are two other parts that we need to know. The first is use developed bullet points. And the second is do more than is asked. Use developed bullet points, do more than is asked. Let's have a look and see how that translates onto the page. Okay then, let's use those other two parts of the writing tool. And that is use developed bullet points and do more than is asked. So, this is a bullet point here. And rather than just taking the word difficult and putting it in there, or challenging and putting it in, we want to develop it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just put it into a sentence. It is difficult. Go then. Now I could have used it is challenging to learn, but I went for difficult. We can see here that this question is worth three marks. And if we think about the last part of our writing tool, which is do more than is asked, that would mean that we would ideally like four bullet points rather than three. Simply take our next point that we've identified. And again, I'm just going to do a little illustration here. Requires practice. practice and I would use the exact same process two synonyms developed bullet point now eventually what we want to happen is for this part here thinking tool to essentially take place in our heads um, and for us only to write the answers and develop bullet points Ideally, but when we're just starting out, might be an idea to write it out long form, a little bit like in maths when you show you're working. And we would simply do this four times. And the rest of the answer would follow the exact same system using the exact same tools. Now, to recap then on what we've hopefully learned in this video, we can think about paraphrasing by using the plant pot as our thinking tool. Synonyms come out of the bottom. Not sure if it's a synonym? Use a simple sentence. Some synonyms will be closer to the true meaning, the original meaning, than others. We also have a writing tool for paraphrasing. This writing tool consists of three rules. Change the language, but not the meaning use develop the bullet points and do more than is asked and that's the end of the whistle plus paraphrasing lesson for today i'm mr quinn thank you very much for listening hopefully you learned something hopefully you learn something hopefully you will take these tools away and you'll be able to use them and apply them to your schoolwork they are relevant at all levels, as I said at the beginning, three through to six, the same thinking and writing tools, just the difficulty and the level of the vocabulary will change as you progress through secondary school. Well, have a good day or evening or rest of the morning, whatever you're, you're up to, and uh, I'll join you again for the next Wizzle Plus video, uh, and take it easy till then. Thank you.
Then there are these S's. The three lines. Three lines, like this. And the, the top and the bottom. They'll come across like this. Bring these in. And then you have the classic S. And now, you may wish to turn that into... Synonym. Plus.